the 24-year-old Roddick, a two-time champion here at the SAP Open. He won back-to-back -back titles in 2004 and 2005. Roddick is a big hitter. You might know this. He's got that big serve. I think it's been clocked at, what, 154 miles an hour? 55. Oh, I'm, I stand corrected. Come on now. Andy Roddick joins us now live. First of all, nice to have you back in the Bay Area. Oh, it's good to be here. It's good to be here. I gave you some heat with your hat, but uh, hat hair, I'm sure you look fine. The women always scream when you're here. <laughs> no, I just I, I actually pay a couple of my friends to go up there and scream like girls, so um, that's all it is. <laughs> I got to ask you, you just came from the Czech Republic. You had some Davis Cup, uh, Davis Cup matches, which you did great with. That was Sunday. Yeah. You just arrived here. This is like a 14-hour flight. Are you here, or is this just a shell of you? No, I'm good. I, you know, I'll, I'll tip off tomorrow night. I should be okay, as long as I get a good, good, uh, good amount of sleep tonight. I was up at about 4 o'clock this morning, wide awake, just kind of doing laps around my room for a couple of hours. But um, that should be okay by tomorrow. In a big picture sense, uh, with Andre Agassi out of the game now, you've kind of taken over, at least for American tennis, you've become the face of it, especially after winning the U.S. Open uh, a few years back. The pressure, forget tennis, but just the pressure, public pressure to, to maintain the sport, do you fall that, uh, does that fall upon your shoulders? Yeah, I think it does. I mean, it, guys like myself, uh, James has come along and started playing real well, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tough legacy that they left behind, you know, with Andre and Pete, and uh, I don't know if we'll ever fill that void, but uh, we'll, we'll certainly try our best, and we'll try to take care of our responsibilities. How's your game? Right now, you're number fourth in the world. How's your game? Obviously, you want to get to number one, but but that guy, uh, what, Federer, he just stands in your way. How you feeling this year? Yeah, I feel good. Uh, you know, with the exception of that match against Roger in Australia, I've been playing pretty well this year. Um, made a nice nice run there and uh, did, did okay in the U.S. Open at the end of last year. So I've been, been playing pretty well in the major events. Uh, a little bit of a slump at the beginning of last year, but I, I think that's behind me. So uh, feeling pretty good. One major change that you've made recently, uh, a new coach, Jimmy Connors, a tennis legend. Yeah. Why'd you go with Connors and uh, how has he helped your game? <laughs> well, you know, it, 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 was, it was an intriguing prospect, and I, I, didn't know if he would, uh, I didn't know if he would say yes, but I asked him and he did, and uh, it's been a great partnership, and I really, uh, I really enjoy my time with Jimmy. Okay, as we wrap this up, uh, I see you, I don't know if I see you more in Sports Illustrated Magazine or People Magazine. You're, 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 you're all over the place. Uh, you've done Saturday Night Live, you've done Regis and Kathy, or, or Regis and Kelly, I take that back, yeah. Letterman and the whole deal. Uh, is it fun, the lifestyle, or do you kind of, when you go home, is it you need your own space? Both. Both. Um, you know, like you said, I think it's uh, I think it's important to keep the, the sport of tennis going, and a lot of it is the off-court stuff, you know, is... Uh, the promotion and, uh, of the game and, and doing all that stuff, which I like because I, I feel like I owe tennis so much. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's nice when I get home and can just relax.